Collagens, if I'm saying it correctly, shame on me. Chapter three, verses nine and 10. And it's your boy Icon with a Netflix review for you doing that warrior nun. So we are <laughs> on the road to um, enlightenment as Adriel would say. So now in this particular episode, it, uh, it takes us where we left off, where Lilith had just found out that Shotgun Mary, <laughs> quote unquote, has been killed. I refuse to believe such trivial nonsense. So it, it takes us back to Avon B. And Avon B, because in the last episode, they were with that random guy who had that group of um, freedom fighters or whatever, and they teamed up with him to try to find out some information. They were following some of Adriel's followers, like the children of Adrian, and when they followed them to some random place in the desert, we saw that the, the minions of Adriel, they had a cross, and they were taking the cross and like propping it up in the middle of nowhere. And then for some reason, some locusts started coming out of nowhere, and then like red smoke showed up. And after that, that's when Avon B was like, yo, we out, because <laughs> I don't know what they're planning. We need more information and we're not trying to get exposed. So they ended up going back to work while they tried to regroup. While they're at work, you know, Ava and B, they got into a little, you know, like altercation because like B's whole thing is she was just like, oh, you must calm down. And she's like, we have to pull back. You know, we can't get too involved. And then, you know, like Ava's just like, oh, but this is, this is the mission and we got to do the mission and we got to fight and we got to fight. I mean, clearly her whole point of wanting to fight so bad was because she kind of had a crush on the dude that they were hanging out with. And B kind of saw through that. But then Ava was just like, oh, she's, she's like, She's like, sometimes it feels like you get jealous every time I make a new friend. And she was like, oh, that's preposterous. So now the two of them are kind of beaving a little bit. And then they end up going back to work because, again, they're still trying to keep a low profile. While they're at work, you know, B is at the table. She's just sitting there watching Ava to make sure nothing bad happens to Ava. This real pretty, you know, black girl show up. And then she tried to talk to, um, you know, she tried to talk to B. Her and B flirted a little bit. Because like I said, B was a lesbian and she got kicked, like, in season one, she talked about how her parents like kicked her out of the house and shunned her from society, whatever the case may be. She got kicked out though she was shunned by her parents because her parents found out that she liked women. They've done everything on this show except actually say the words <laughs> to let you know that this woman likes women. And I don't know why it's like, I don't know why it's, I, I understand why it's a big deal in the story because, you know, like her parents are obviously very like traditional Christians and, you know, same sex love is like blasphemy, you know, against the Catholic church. Like I understand all that, but she is who she is. You know what I'm saying? Like she's lesbian. Just say it. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so many like little Easter egg clues that they're dropping on the show. I'm like, just tell us the girl's gay. Like get it over. Anyway, so, and the girl, and the girl was talking to her. She was, you know, she was hot. So, you know, they're flirting with each other. Ava sees them flirting with each other. And while they're flirting with each other, the guy that Ava kind of has a thing for, he comes back and he's like, hey, listen, we captured one of the children of Adriel and we're going to interrogate them and we want you to come. So she convinces B to go with her. B was kind of hesitant at first. She was like, oh, I don't think we should do it. But then she was just like, no, this is our chance to get real information. And then they go down to, you know, to go interrogate the guy. But B did say to Ava, she was like, listen, she was like, don't get, she's, she's like, we can go down there, but let's not get exposed. You know, like she said that no one must know who you are. Otherwise it means death and destruction for everybody involved. So they go down to interrogate the dude. When they get there, because Ava is the, you know, the warrior nun, because she has the power of the halo, she can see through like this person's soul and she sees that the guy has like a red demon spirit with inside him. They're just trying to figure out what to do with it now. The guy who they had captured, he was he was captured, like he was tied up with his hands in the air. He ended up breaking, you know, breaking through his chains and then he attacked everybody in the room. And then, you know, he knocked out B, he knocked out the guy that Ava got the thing for, and then it was just Ava and the other six members of, you know, of that crew. So then at this point, the the red, Ava ended up beating up, you know, like the guy, she knocked him out, and then she was beating him, beating him, and beating him, to the point where the red demon came out of the guy's body, and it was just like flying around in the air, but only but only Ava could see him because, you know, she's the halo part, she's the halo bear. And then when the red spirit was making its way towards B and the red spirit was about to consume B, that's when Ava used the power of the halo to disperse the demon. She's like, I cast thee, <laughs> you know, like I cast thee out. And then she destroyed the demon. But now everybody else around there was just like, oh, what was that thing? What was that glowing ring coming out of your back? <laughs> you know, and they're just like, you, you just displayed such power. And then after that, then B snatched up Ava and then he was like, we have to go. And then like, they, you know, they ran out of there. So when they got back to their house, you know, B was just like, we gotta get out of here. She was like, you know, it's time for us to go. And then 
Ava was just like, I apologize. You know, she's like, I, she's like, I didn't mean to showcase the power. And then she was like, well, did you really? Because she's like, you haven't listened to a damn thing I've said all episode. And she was like, you're pissing me off. And then they got into an argument. And then V was just like, you never do what you're told and you don't listen to me. And then that's when Ava got upset. And she was like, look, woman, she's like, first of all, I ain't asked for this shit. She said, she said, I did not ask to be the halo bearer. I ain't asked to be paralyzed. I ain't asked to die and come back to life. She's like, I'm trying to figure all this shit out on the fly. And it's hard. It's stressful. And I just need to get off my back about it. Now, here's where I disagree with Ava. Ava does not have the right to say that to me. The fact that Ava said, I didn't ask for this. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying the best that I can and I'm making this up on the fly. That made B's entire point. B's entire point is, you don't listen to me. You're not taking my advice. It's my responsibility to make sure you get through this alive. Take the help. If she's talking to you and she's telling you something's not a good idea, take her advice. The problem is you don't want to listen to anybody. You just want to run in half cocked. And now that everything blew up in your face, now you feel bad. Like, B's anger is valid. Like, she should be mad at you. And, you know, then Ava should legitimately apologize, which she did. She apologized and she was like, oh, I'm sorry. And then B was just like, no, I'm sorry. She's like, I forget that you're new to this and you didn't ask for this. And I'm like, even still, that's more of a reason why she should listen to you. So <laughs> listen to the damn girl and, you know, <laughs> like, let's move on. And then the two of them cry and they hug and they embrace and then we move on. So now, <laughs> now um, Mother Superior, her and the little short girl that um, is in charge of the, we the weapons cache, they end up bumping into Yaz. Yasmin, who was the reporter in the first episode. When Yasmin meets the two of them, she's just like, oh, she said, my group of people, she said that my organization, we were created by the second Halo Bearer. And she, we, she said that our organization has been passed down from generation after generation. And we're here to deliver a message to the Halo Bearer, to the warrior nun. She's like, but then Mother Superior was just like, well, what's the message that you have? She's like, I've been sworn to secrecy. She's like, ever since I was born, I've been charged with the task of only telling the Halo Bearer. And I need you to take me to the Halo Bearer. So they were just like, no. <laughs> no, they said they said they were going to do it. They actually did say that. There was a funny scene too because when the war when um when Mother Superior and the other girl when they were trying to get Yasmin to their secret nun location, which which when they got there, the whole location was full of dead warrior nuns because their base had got found out and they got shot up on. The short girl ended up using a tranquilizer dart to knock out Yasmin and the Mother Superior was just like, "Well, <laughs> you know, you know, she was just like, "Well, thanks for that." And then, you know, that's when the girl, she was just like, "Oh, she was like, "Oh, I th she was like, "Were you thinking putting a blindfold on her?" And she was and like in her mind, she was like, "No, now we have to carry her." <laughs> and I thought that was like really funny cuz she knocked her out. But anyway, so then after that, you know, like I said, she basically told her she was like, "Listen, I have a message and I'm only going to tell the halo bearer so then she was like fine she was like send up this mother superior said send the word out to all the nuns and she's like every warrior nun who's left will all gather in madrid and then we'll have this girl tell you know the halo ava what she needs to tell her and then we'll figure out a way to stop ariel so she sends the word out she gets on her little um her two-way um, cross pager and she sends the message out to the rest of the nuns all across the globe you know to meet in madrid so they can have one big warrior nun meeting adriel now he goes to the vatican and runs up on the pope because they got pictures they got video of him him on the on the five o'clock news with him walking on water which i thought was hilarious he turned water into wine which i thought was really hilarious and i'm like is he ariel or jesus like <laughs> you know what i'm saying like let's just like is this jesus's brother like what are we doing so like it was but it was like him doing all that because it's, it's very nonchalant when he does all it <laughs> too which is like which makes it funny but anyway so next he's gonna watch in the next episode a blind man's gonna see but you know but he ends up going to the pope and he tells the pope he's like listen he was like you and i need to team up because you know everybody loves the vatican everybody loves the pope the Pope's word is law and he said that you and I can bring forth a new age of Christian Christianity and you know we can take over the world and do good things for the world but the Pope was just like see he was like I see what you're doing he was like you just need the endorsement of the Pope you know because the thing is no one's gonna like even like Adriel can fly out of the sky like he can literally like open he can literally part the Red Sea no one's gonna follow him because at the end of the day people are gonna assume like it's a magic trick like it's a parlor trick like he's deceiving us somehow and Adriel knows that which is why he went to the Pope because he said if the Pope endorses me if the Pope tells you know the all the followers of the Vatican if you tell everybody that I'm real then they'll follow me and then you and I can do big things but then the Pope was like Pope the Pope got out of his seat and he was like I say the Nay, and I cast thee out of the church and then that's when Adriel put the magical voodoo on him and he was just like this was my house before it was yours boy and he's like I will make this whole building disappear but he's like think about my offer to legitimize Adriel in the eyes of Christians all over the planet so now the Pope got yoked up on and he now he has a decision to make otherwise Adriel is gonna kill him 
And then finally, in the last scene, good old Lilith, Lilith, she was following the traitor priest, and then that's when he told her, he was like, oh, shotgun Mary is dead. She ended up getting away. She went to go talk to her mama for some reason. Her mom was a total biatch. And <laughs> I, I can say that in this circumstance. Her mom basically like looks down on her and calls her a failure because her mom wanted her to be the halo bearer. And I'm like, how does her mom know this? Like, was her mom a warrior nun at one point? If she was a warrior nun, how did you have a daughter? Because nuns aren't supposed to have children. So the, the circumstances behind her mom is like very confusing to me. But the moral of the story is her mom basically looks down on her daughter and doesn't really care about her daughter. For some reason, her mom only cared about her daughter being the halo bearer. And now that that isn't to be because Ava's the halo bearer, she's like, oh, you've brought shame to the family. And then, you know, like Lilith gets mad and then, you know, she leaves. And then for some reason, and this was interesting, the blonde chick, the blonde scientist chick who I was talking about in the last episode, who I still don't know what her role on the show is, the one who had the son that jumped into a magical vortex, Lilith goes to her house and asks her for help. How do you know her? Are you sisters? Do you know each other? Do you have a past? Like, what's the deal? Like, they legitimately know each other to the point where, like, the girl showed up at her front door and, like, pressed the button and then she let her in. And then while she was at the scientist's house, the scientist was looking at her arm because she had all that black stuff all over her arm. And she was trying to figure out about her power and where her power comes from and how she became who she is after she died and got brought back to life. And then while they were sitting on the table, that's when Lilith got the word on the nunnery, on the, on the nun phone, that, you know, all the nuns, all the warrior nuns are going to gather in Madrid to have a meeting. So then the scientist said, she was like, she said to Lilith, she was like, oh, are you going to join them in Madrid? And then she was just like, no, she was like, I have more pressing matters at hand. She's like, but I at least must tell them the fate of Shotgun Mary. So then she takes, she takes the two-way pager, the two-way nun pager, and then she sends a message out to everybody, letting them know what happened to Mary. At that point, B had saw the message, and then she was just like, oh, Mother Superior wants us to meet in, in Madrid right away. And then, and then she's like, oh, there's another message. And then when she saw the second message, she started crying. And then Ava was like, what's wrong? And then she was like, all the message just says is Shotgun Mary didn't make it. And then, you know, Ava started crying. Everybody started crying. Then they showed a scene with Mother Superior and the other girl crying. They fell to their knees. And I'm just like, since when all of a sudden was everybody so in love with Shotgun Mary? Because <laughs> they made it seem like in season one, she was the outcast and she didn't really have friends like that. Like, like she was kind of like a loner. Now all of a sudden everybody's in tears because Shotgun Mary dead. And with that being said, I call blasphemy. <laughs> like I say the nay because television 101, ladies and gentlemen, if there's no body, if there's, if they did not show a physical dead body of Shotgun Mary, Shotgun Mary is still alive. Lilith is only saying that because that's what the traitor priest said to her. He told her like, oh, Shotgun Mary didn't make it. And now she's just like, no, damn you. And then she tells everybody else. And I'm like, you're taking the word of somebody that betrayed you. Mary ain't dead, y'all. Like, Mary coming back. Like I said, I say, I call, I call nay on that one. <laughs> Shotgun Mary will return at some point before the season's over. Mark my words. And then in the final, final scene, the traitor priest was talking to Ariel because he has one of those two-way nun pagers. And then when he read the Morris Code, he was like, oh, the nuns are gathering in Madrid. And then that's when Adriel said, he was like, you will meet them there as well, you know, to join in the cause and blah, blah, blah. And that was it. And thank you for tuning in. So episode two was good. You know, I said episode two was good. I don't know about the drama between Ava and B. Like, the whole thing with Ava being mad at her for not listening, like that actually needs to happen because homegirl need to sit. She need, she need to take a couple of steps back. <laughs> she need to take a like, listen, you got somebody, listen to the person who's in your ear. Like I said, I don't believe Shotgun Mary dead. Like she coming back. But share your questions, comments, and or concerns down below and we will continue to talk about it for all you fans of Warrior Nun. Check me out on Twitter and or Instagram, always on YouTube where you can leave your comments. Let me know what you think about the Ava and B dynamic. Do you think Shotgun Mary is dead? What about Lilith? What's her plans and her with the scientists and everything? And we will continue to talk about it. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Hit the notification bell. Subscribe to my channel if you're new to the channel as well. Always appreciated to have you guys. We have 250 subscribers, halfway to 500. And we still got Stargirl on the channel. When Stargirl comes back on November 30th, we're doing Titans as always. And then on December 8th, we've got the Doom Patrol. So that was it. Until next time, there's some more Vatican action for the land of the war. Take care, and we're out this. Soon.